we need to introduce the idea of expectation value, which is an idea coming from measurement in general and probability in general. But we need to make sure everyone knows what it is, how to calculate it in kind of an old-fashioned classical way, and then how we would calculate it within quantum mechanics. So when we denote expectation value, we're putting our operator, or the variable representing our matrix, itself within angle brackets. So that just means find the expectation value of this measurement. And you can think about that as an average, but it has a very specific meaning, so it's helpful to think about this as expectation value. So what the expectation value is, is again the average value of the measurement, but it might be different than any of the possible measurements itself. So as an example, let's work through a classical example which is, for instance, uh, a die, or right, the probability of a dice. So if what I'm trying to think about is my expectation value of rolling a dice, and if I call this, for instance, D, making that measurement as rolling the dice once, the average value is going to work out to be the probability of each individual value times what that measurement would be. And that's just the six sides of a dice. So 1 plus 1 sixth, there's six sides, times 2, plus 1 sixth times 3, and so on. So in this case, because each one has an average, the same probability, right? Each one has the probability of, of 1 sixth. We can pull out that 1 sixth, and it's then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. So when I simplify that down, that's... 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21, so 21 divided by 6. So 21 divided by 6 is not actually a integer, right? This doesn't work out to be an integer. And so what that tells you is that the expectation value, the average value you get from rolling a die a single time, is actually different than any of the individual possible measurements. What does this work out to be actually? Well, 3.5. Okay, so it's the same way in a quantum system. Your expectation value, your average value, can be different than any of your possible values. And what we did here, notice, is we talked about the probability of a specific one times what that value is, right? So what is that value? And I'm writing it this way so that you can see in the form up here, what we've done is we've summed over every possible value, and in our quantum state, every possible measurement corresponds to an eigenstate and an eigenvalue. So where here it was 1, that in our quantum state would be our measurement value, which is the eigenvalue. And then you multiply that by the probability and sum up over all of the possible ones, what we did here. So let's go through a quantum example of this. And I've picked an initial state, which is spin up in the x direction. We can ask, what is the expectation value? of spin in the z direction, and then what is the expectation value of spin in the x direction? Now remember that your measurement values, your eigenvalues, are going to be plus or minus h bar over 2, not just 1 or negative 1, and that's a mistake I see students make. So let's write it out first in terms of probabilities and our eigenvalues. So what is the possible value, one eigenvalue for spin in the z direction, is going to be plus h bar over 2, spin up. And as you might know by now, the probability of that happening for a spin-up particle is 50% or 0.5. And then our second possibility is that we measure negative h bar over 2, again, with a 50% probability. And what you might be able to see here is that this term and that term are the same in magnitude equal in sign, so it's actually 0. The expectation value, the average value of measuring spin in the z direction is 0. That doesn't mean we ever measure zero, just like a die is never going to give you three and a half, but that's the average value. What about spin in the x direction? Well, spin up, what probability does that have to happen? That's actually the definition of our state, so that's one. Plus, spin down in the x direction, we would still be measuring these eigenvalues. What's that probability there? Zero, because it's entirely spin up. So in this case, the expectation value is plus h bar over 2. So it really, when you're talking about expectation value, it's of a measurement, of an operator. Because in these two situations, it was in fact for the same state, 
But because we're asking about different measurements, different operators, we got different values. Now, if you haven't already calculated what the probabilities are, right? In the case of rolling a die, I know what the probabilities are. Spin x at that, this point, I know what the probabilities are. But if you haven't calculated the probabilities, there's kind of a shortcut you can use, if you will. And that is that you take whatever your state is and you transform your ket to the bra, remember to complex conjugate and transpose, and then you sandwich your operator in between that state as a bra and that state as a ket. And you can think about this as if you're going to do this, you have to either have expressed this operator in terms of bras and kets, an outer product, or you work in everything in a matrix representation. Either will work. And that then kind of is inherently baking in those probabilities, because we know that the probabilities are really coming from these, um, the coefficients here. So this is one way that you can just do this directly if you don't already know the probabilities, and if you don't already know um, your, well, technically still here, you, you have to know your, your eigenvalues. But if you, you have to know your eigenvalues to do this because you're still ending up, um, the eigenvalues are baked into that, that operator. So again, this is kind of a shortcut. If you don't know your probabilities already, otherwise you can just calculate it directly that way. So this is the idea of expectation value. If you have meta in classical systems or kind of normal probability, same thing. We have this version of it now. If you haven't met it before, think about it as an average, but just really understand that distinction of the average of a bunch of measurements versus each individual measurement.